Oh, boy. Wow, praise the Lord. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> We're up front and personal. Woo! Shiny. No, but seriously, you know, I, uh, I like getting up front and personal sometimes or intimate because it reminds me that... Uh, I was thinking, should I lift this up or should I not? So I paused there for a moment. I'm looking at the monitor back there. But getting back to what we were talking about, thankfulness, gratitude, the opportunity to offer up the sacrifice of thanks, the peace offering, giving that chance and that motivation for us to be grateful, to be appreciative. You see, each one of those words have different meanings and different contexts. When they're kept in their context, they mean one thing. When they're taken out of context, they don't really fit. And sometimes that's what happens when we say thanksgiving because we don't really give thanks. See, if you reverse the order, give thanks means one thing, but thanksgiving is a whole different other thing, isn't it? So we wanted to take the time to kind of reflect on what the first thanksgivings were like. In Leviticus, we're told what they are. They're peace offerings. They're offerings unto God to make peace with Him because there's something that we don't have right in our relationship and we want to be communing together. We want to have fellowship together. We want to restore our relationship with God together. And so let's read about what that kind of offering would be like. That kind of peace offering that we would want to restore our relationship with God through thanksgiving or giving of thanks or the sacrifice of thanks. And we look at Leviticus, which is basically where all the Levites were told how to offer up the sacrifices to God, the offerings, the things that were done in a religious nature and a religious order in order to satisfy a holy God. And people lots of times, they, they get this whole idea that somehow we throw away Leviticus, we throw away Deuteronomy, we throw away all these different books of the Bible by somehow saying, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Well, you're still doing the same thing, you just haven't realized it yet. Because if you really want to sit down and make a direct analogy between Christendom, Christianity, and the way that it personifies itself, even the evangelicals like Calvary chapels, I can show you ways that you have a dogmatic routine that is exactly the same as what the Levi Levites were doing in performing that with which was pleasing to God. But, you know, if you want to have that study some other time, <laughs> we'll go there. But the point is, is that sometimes people mistake what's going on just by reading it. I mean, if you read it, it's pretty simple. They're having a barbecue. Yeah! Check it, dude. You would think God knew how to party. I mean, that's the way I read it. I read this and we're talking about the peace offering. So let's open up to Leviticus chapter 7. And we're going to look at verses 11, probably down through, oh, I don't know. Uh, probably through 17. And we'll probably get an interesting perspective on it that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Maybe you never looked at you know, the Levites as being party people. I mean, maybe you think Levites are like running around in black robes, you know, and kind of like the Orthodox, you know, with their tzitzis, you know, and they're mourning because the temple's destroyed, so they wear black. Of course, once the temple's built, I want to see if they change over to white, because they spend some big bucks on their hats and some big bucks on their clothes, because they spend a lot of money in order to wear their quote-unquote Shabbos best. Yeah, so let's just see what the rest of the story is. But when it was in the beginning, when God was excited with his people and his people were excited to be with the Lord, then they got together and they had barbecues. They offered up things like giving of thanks, the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of thanks, the peace offerings, the things that they wanted to enjoy God's presence with, and they wanted to employ the priest and the person that's going to offer these things up so that together they would enjoy the fellowship of God. For it was the priest and the person and the presence. It was the presence of God, the priest and the person. They were together. It was the three in one. It was amazing what God had done in the reality of giving these sacrifices for the children of Israel to remember and observe all the days of their life. And so we see in verse 11, And this is the law, the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto the Lord. 
If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. Yeah, lackeys. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> lackeys. <laughs> it's like, you know, sometimes you just want to enjoy food like matzo, <laughs> matzo balls, matzo, matzo, matzo balls, matzo balls, matzo balls. I love matzo ball soup. Lackeys. I'm not so big on lackeys, but you know, it's like lackeys. Some good lackeys are good. Lackeys. Well, anyways. It's a party. Get in the mood. Get in the celebration here. Read it as it is, a celebration. So if he offer it, if he's going to give for Thanksgiving, oh boy, party down, dude. Guess what? We're going to enjoy this because it is a offering for a Thanksgiving. And then he shall offer it with the sacrifice of Thanksgiving, unleavened cakes. Yeah, mingled with oil. And unleavened wafers, anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering unleavened bread, or leavened bread, whoops, leavened bread, with the sacrifice of thanksgiving for his peace offerings. That's you, Gentile. You're the leavened bread. <laughs> we won't go there for a minute. <laughs> and then she shall offer one out of the whole oblation for a heave offering unto the Lord. You know, heave it, toss it, throw it. It's a pizza. Yeah, the first pizzas. They were heave offerings. Spin it. Uh-oh, the Lord took it. Oh, well, the heave offering's been taken and accepted. That's what a heave offering is. Unto the Lord, and it shall be the priest that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offerings. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offers his sacrifice, and on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. Third day! You should always kind of like, every time somebody says third day, you shouldn't think of the worship band, you know, and kind of think of the music. You should think of Jesus! Third day! Jesus! Third day! Jesus! Third day! You know, on the third day rose again. And that's why it should be burnt with fire, because that's how long the sacrifice was taken to be accepted, you know, technically. Because he went down and preached liberty to the captives that were held in bondage in the bosom of Abraham. And those that were in the blessings were receiving, and they got, and they're saved, and they're in heaven waiting for us. And the ones that weren't were cursed, and they didn't go, and they're like, you know where. <laughs> Not so good. So, here we have the peace offering in Leviticus 7, 11 through 17. You're supposed to eat it. You're supposed to eat it. Remember this. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. I mean, we're not talking about like, you know, oh, morning. We're talking about eating. We're talking about meat eaters. You should be rejoicing in this. God wanted you to offer up, you know, as thanksgiving for a peace offering to make peace or to do it when certain times that you mandatory peace offerings so that you would eat meat. Eat your heart out, vegan. Guess what? God's into meat. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, temporarily anyway. So, hey, it was good. We had a barbecue. So you barbecuers, you know, you got something to look forward to. <laughs> got to do it the Lebecca way, but, you know, you can still work it out. You know, you still got to give a portion of it. So, you know, next time that you're, you know, like cooking weenies on the barbie, you know, just take one of the weenies and throw it away. Or throw it up in the air. Or throw it out that way. The dog will get it. But, you know, in the meantime, if it goes up and suddenly it ding, disappears... Heave offering. God took your sacrifice. Praise the Lord. So, in a humorous way, you know, we're playing and we're having fun, you know, and we're talking about it. But in a more serious way, that's what God wanted to cause to happen for the children of Israel. He wanted you, as a child of God, to recognize the oil that was being used in the offerings, the Holy Spirit. He wanted you to recognize that after three days, it would be done, the sacrifice. It would be over. That after the third day, you would no longer need any sacrifice. That it would have been accomplished by the third day when Jesus rose from the grave. So the oil would be permeating and permeating through and there would be even leavened bread as well as unleavened bread that was used. So you see in this offering of thanksgiving, the perfect example of what Jesus is as our peace offering. He is the perfect sacrifice that was given to God 
for our salvation. He's the reason and the purpose and the design of why we should enjoy Thanksgiving and have a barbecue. We should celebrate what God has done and have communion at Thanksgiving. You see, there's not many people that I know today, and I'll be honest with you, I'll just throw it out there and see what happens today. Maybe this video will get out there and somebody will go, hey, good idea. Check that one off. Um, are they going to do communion? No, too much hassle. I'm sorry, but that's Passover, you know. As often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me, the one day you should have communion is Thanksgiving. You should commune with the Lord your God and do this in remembrance of me because Jesus is the peace offering. Jesus is the Thanksgiving offering. Jesus is that offering of Thanksgiving that we give unto God for the leavened bread, for the unleavened bread, for those that are permeated with oil, that are filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the pleasing, acceptable sacrifice and on the third day be consumed because on the third day he rose from the grave completely. So you see there's this perfect type, picture, analogy, personification, fulfillment of Jesus in this type right here of the peace offering. And we see him and we should do the same thing when we do our own offerings today. When we have a Thanksgiving day, like in the holiday of Thanksgiving, or we give thanks sometime during the day. When you have a barbecue and you get together with friends, give a heave offering, a portion to the Lord. But also remind yourself of those sacrifices that God has done for you. That when you masticate that little steak, you know, when you're kind of like, you know, piercing it, you know, so that you tenderize it. Remember that God was tenderized for you. And you're being tenderized so that you can minister to others. Yeah, by His stripes we're healed. So likewise, when you, when you spice up, I don't spice up, when you salt up the meat, you know, it causes to draw out the blood, you know, and it causes to permeate the meat and it gives it flavor, you know. Have you lost your savor? I mean, think about it. Everything that you do has a direct purpose and design in your life. It can be directly applicable. You can take your Thanksgiving Day meal even and sit down and say, hey, look at all this. What kind of turkey are you? <laughs> You're a butterball. <laughs> You've been injected with butter, margarine, not oil. Or you deep fried. Hey, you know, check it out. <laughs> Lackeys, fried in oil. Yeah, we got turkey fried in oil. I mean, there's so much that is so obvious. God making people do the Word of God, whether they know it or not. They don't even see the analogy or the connection. I do. Oh, well. So, if I can inspire you, if I could provoke you, if I can cause you to experience the fullness, the, I like to say it this way, with a heart. You go from the middle, you go up, over, around, outside of yourself, back into the really point of it all, and you go the fullness, which is a heart. The fullness of thankfulness is the appreciation of God foreshadowing what was to come, fulfilling of what was accomplished, and foretelling what you should be doing. That is what Leviticus is all about. That's what giving thanks really means. It means to have an attitude of gratitude being so appreciative of the fact of what God has done that you can celebrate with communion the personification of what Jesus is for you, your salvation. You could eat your meal with gladness and be stuffed and filled and then have communion and celebrate Jesus today. Would you not do that? Can I not offer to you the same thing the Lord said to do? As often as you do this, you proclaim my coming again in glory till I come and eat again of the fruit of the vine and of the bread of the earth when I do so with you in the kingdom. But until then, I wait for you. So would you not do so for him, proclaiming that Jesus is coming again? Or would you rather just simply ignore what is so obviously written in the word? Would you not like to explain always like Jews do about Passover? Explain why you're doing something at Thanksgiving? And be that so obvious a Gentile Passover in the middle of Thanksgiving by using the peace offering? Whoa! Dude! Check it! You can make your own Seder. Yeah! You say there's a little book that explains about it. You can write your own Seder right there from Leviticus. Maybe I should write it and sell it and you know market it and make it up to a Christian thing. Messianic? <laughs> Scary. 
But God has given you freely to experience the reality of the kingdom of God within you and about you and inside the Word and through the Word and by the Word. He wants to show you why that is being fulfilled every time you give thanks and praise. Yada yada, as we say in Hebrew, which means praise, and it's a verb to praise. You know, yada yada. You know, it's like, well, we don't say it for that reason, but you know, that's Yiddish. Yada yada is kind of like, oh yeah. It's another word. <laughs> it's not really what you mean, what you think it means. But yada is yeah, like avoda, but yada avoda. You know, baba da da, <laughs> abba. You know, we kind of get we like das. You know, da 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 da. <laughs> well, anyways. But the, the, the reality of what you should be doing and you should be chewing on is the fact that right here in the peace offering we see Jesus. That right where you are in the middle of your life with communion you can see Jesus. With God saying to you to do this thing whenever you want to give thanks why don't you add to this you know the oil the leavened bread the unleavened bread add these things to it so that it will be a thanksgiving so that you would enjoy it with him. It would be a fulfillment and a fulfilling of your hunger and your appetite that you'd be stuffed like a turkey. That you'd be able to enjoy it with the fullness of what God wants to give you of His Holy Spirit. That of the nature of that with which God has sacrificed His Son for you, that which is offered on the table. Would you not do the same and tell people around you at your table about Jesus that way? Could you not take your giving of thanks and thanksgiving to make it so obvious about Jesus that people will walk away thinking, man, I never knew Jesus was in thanksgiving. Huh. I guess it really is all about him. Praise the Lord.